Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with another episode of Total Breakdown. We've got a great battle in from Chidora101 as he leads the Beastmen against the Axis forces composed of Greenskins. The Beastmen come in with Morgor in charge alongside a Brace Shaman of Death, two units of Ungor Spearmen with shields, three units of Gorherd with shields, two units of Ungor Raiders, a unit of Senegors with great weapons, a unit of Chaos Warhounds, a unit of Chaos Warhounds with poison, two units of Minotaurs with shields, and a unit of Minotaurs with great weapons. The double Gorbul has become such a standard, and this is an interesting composition that defies that standard. Lots of shields to protect from ranged fire, some poison, and many minotaurs. I assume they're there not only to make up for the missing Gorbuls, but also to absorb more ranged fire before dying off or routing as compared to said Gorbul would. Now the Greenskins arrive with Grimgor Ironhide in charge, 4 units of Orc Biggins, 2 units of Black Orcs ranked all the way up to rank 7, the Crimson Killers, 4 units of Orc Auror Boys, god forbid I pronounce their uh, name wrong, one of them ranked up to rank 1, and Broken Tusk's Mob. All right, as always, we're going to look at layout first, and it's relatively simple from both fronts, I'd say. Uh, with the Beastmen here, we've got the Gore Herd with shields up front. Right behind them, we do have Morgur as well as the uh, Shaman of Death right back there. Then on either flank, we have the Minotaurs with shields, as you can see, and they're there so they can come in from the flanks or, you know, provide some strength to either flank up front. And uh, then we've got the Ungor Raiders right back here, and then the Spearmen on either flank of the rear, and then at the back, right in the middle, we've got, of course, the Minotaurs with great weapons. And these guys, again, they can protect anything that might be coming in from the rears or from the sides. Uh, these guys can fend off and hopefully protect the Ungor Raiders and, uh, and leave them firing into the fray. Now, off to the side here, all the way up front, we do have the two units of Chaos Warhounds with and without poison, and we also have the Senegors with great weapons. The Greenskins, meanwhile, have a relatively similar, uh, simple layout. They've got to start with the Orc Auror Boys up front. Uh, then we've got the Orc Biggins right behind them and a line of Black Orcs and Crimson Killers and these guys buffing up the center and the flank as needed, able to support that front line or the eventual front line once the Orc Auror Boys uh, do pull back into safety. And they have their cavalry, the uh, Broken Tusks mob, off to the side here as well. Unfortunate placement because of course these three units are right there and they can make very quick work of that one lonely cavalry unit uh, too far away from the ranged units to be protected with some ranged fire. Now, almost instantaneously, the uh, Beastmen push up just a touch, and then they hold their ground because it looks like the thought is to actually shut down the Broken Tusk mob nice and early, and that's a good idea. Again, these guys are all the way isolated off to the side here. It would take quite a bit of effort and work to sort of break the formation and send some support this way, and at that point, these guys can be pushed forward, uh, but from the side of the Beastmen, it's a great idea to first shut down the Broken Tusk mob so they're not free to come in from the rears and the sides later on down the battle. So you'll see, you know, so just sort of pushing up a little bit, trying to cut off, uh, cut the army into two pieces, and you'll see the Orc Auror boys over here. They're pushing and turning around a little bit. They do have to be careful in case these guys come charging up that way, but instead they do pull away. And I would not have done that myself personally. I think they could have uh, just dove into that engagement, but they do pull away, and this allows the Broken Tusk mob to pull back. Now, this is extremely risky pulling away like that because now Broken Tusk's mob can actually go towards the main force and get some degree of protection from these ranged units. So this was quite risky, but you'll notice uh, instead the Greenskins do keep these units uh, separated still. So there is still quite a bit of a distance between the main force and Broken Tusk's mob. So these guys are able to go back in and in fact... Uh, the mob does push towards this cavalry uh, contingent. Meanwhile, you'll see the rest of the Beastmen army is creeping forward now, and these guys are still posturing and positioning themselves as these guys uh, slowly march forward. Again, conserving their vigor, making sure they don't get too tired before lines do meet. And over here, you'll see the Warhounds with Poison leading the charge right behind them, the regular Warhounds, and then the Senegors all the way at the back. Right at the last minute, the Warhounds with Poison are pulled away. The regular Warhounds dive in, hit the the Broken Tusk mob with a charge, and the Senegors with great weapons are able to hit with their charge, which is quite strong and does a decent amount of damage right from the get-go, as you'll see. And then the Chaos Warhounds with poison come in from the rear. So a full surround on Broken Tusk mob, causing a lot of damage, and good work there, sort of separating the uh, Warhounds at the last minute, forcing the Broken Tusk mob to give chase, allowing the Senegors to come in with a full charge from the side. So great sort of movement there, great micromanagement there, and you can see the results almost instantaneously in a handful of seconds. Uh, Broken Tusk Mob is almost taken care of already.
Now, this unit of Orc Arbor Boys is able to turn around and open fire into this clump, and this unit of uh, Chaos Warhounds is being sent in to respond. Unfortunately, they do the, uh, the typical thing that happens every once in a while, where they do keep returning, despite a very clear order, they keep returning into the fray because some units are caught up here, which is very unfortunate, because that allows the Greenskins to reform their lines. These uh, Black Orcs are pushing forward to protect these Orc Arbor Boys, pulling them back a little bit, so uh, it's quite unfortunate, because had those Warhounds come through, that unit of uh, Arbor Boys would have been taken care of quite easily, and you'll see the rest of the Beastman army is still advancing, speeding up now, charging down the field. Uh, with this cavalry contingent taken care of, that threat is gone, so these guys are able to pile in and cause a lot of damage now, and you'll see here the Chaos Warhounds finally having recovered as a group, uh, but, I mean, diving in to finish off Broken Tusk Mob, more or less, and here you'll see the Orc Arbor Boys have uh, opened up fire, and, and hitting these Gorherd with shields not the ideal target. Their shields will absorb much of the ranged fire that's coming in, and again, it would have been better to focus down on one unit, so even though there is some reduced uh, damage intake, at least there is a significant amount of damage, so some work can be done before lines meet. So when you're firing into shielded units, when you don't have any other choice, uh, make sure you're focusing down on one unit, just to cause at least some significant damage. Now up here, you'll notice Broken Tusk Mob has given up, and that's the last time I'll have to say Broken Tusk Mob uh, as they route completely shattered off the field. And over here, you'll see these range guy units are getting a decent amount of work done. The Black Orcs sent in to intercept these guys, and the front lines now do meet. Now, these Gore Herd with shields are going to try and hold the line against the uh, Orc Biggins, but you'll see over here we've got the Minotaurs with shields piling in to the Crimson Killers, and they'll do a decent amount of damage to the Crimson Killers. And over here, initially, these Minotaurs were being sent in to fight these Orc Biggins, but the decision was made quite wisely to instead turn them in and shut down these Orc Arbor Boys, make sure they're not able to get too much work done because you'll see they've already got a decent amount of damage into these uh, Senegors and the Chaos Warhounds. So shutting them down, rolling into them, making sure they're not able to get too many shots off, uh, and then eventually pulling away from this unit of Black Orcs as well because they are getting a lot of work done. Up here, you'll see the Chaos Warhounds with Poison have managed to circumvent this entire situation and are coming in from the rear. And over here, the Ungor Raiders are opening fire as well, uh, firing into the Black Orcs, it looks like. Uh, some into the Black Orcs, some into the uh, Orc Biggins over here. Again, I would suggest focusing down on one unit, uh, but over here, it is a little difficult to pick and choose which unit to fire in on because the Biggins do make a juicy target, especially when they're threatening your front line as they are over here. But in the center, the Minotaurs with great weapons dive in as well to provide some strength to the center, holding back these extremely heavily ranked up Black Orcs and possibly trying to puncture through and hit some of these uh, ranged units as well. You'll notice Morgur does dive into combat as well and very quickly Grimgor Ironhide will reposition himself to attack Morgur. Now, as these spearmen do pile in, you'll notice a couple things going on. The Senegor with uh, great weapons managed to disengage from these Black Orcs and are now creeping in towards the Orc Arbor Boys. So because the Senegors and the Chaos Warhounds with poison were left free, uh, they can now come in and do a lot of damage to the rear of the Greenskins. And you'll see very quickly, to keep an eye on the HP of that one unit over there, very quickly they give up on the fight. Sorry, their morale drops, not their HP, their morale drops almost instantaneously. And as this range fire goes back and forth, you'll see over here, the Minotaurs with shields doing a number on the Crimson Killers, and even though Wa, Stand Your Ground, and Foe Seeker all go down in the center here, a lot of strength coming in. Then another sort of retreat over here, the Chaos Warhounds and the Senegors with great weapons do pull back. Of course, they're best used cycle charging, so they pull back, and now they just need to be sent back in. All its ranged fire doing a significant amount of morale damage as well, and you'll see over here, these guys dive into these Black Orcs. Not the best call, I would say. Right now, the Minotaurs with shields are doing a good amount of work on the Black Orcs. The Minotaurs will trade very well and uh, even destroy the Black Orcs. So sending in the Senegors and the Chaos Warhounds with poison, not entirely necessary. It would have been much better to send them into the front over here, make some quick work of these Orc Biggins over here perhaps, and allow these units to close in on this unit of Black Orcs, or perhaps then come in and support these uh, the, fi the fight against these Black Orcs. Uh, sending the Warhounds with poison in here, a little understandable. Uh, maybe send them in, you know, put in some poison damage and then pull out and then get back into the center over here. But uh, ultimately, there were better uses of the Senegors with great weapons and the Chaos Warhounds over there. Range fire still coming in, trying to shut down this unit of Orc Bigots and this unit of Ungor Raiders you'll see giving chase. I think chasing down this unit of Orc Arbor Boys. Now, they are a good target, of course. You want to try and break enemy ranged fire as quickly as possible. And you'll see because the Beastmen were able to do that, and the Greenskins were not. 
a lot of the green skin units are fleeing. Just that range fire is great at damaging morale, and of course it helps when you've got chaos spawn creeping up as well as minotaurs and uh, and senegors charging at you from all directions. So these guys unfortunately not put into guard mode, so they are chasing this unit of orc arrow boys uh, potentially off the field. They do engage Grimgor Ironhide for a little while, but they just managed to creep by, by because he's too busy beating on Morgur the Shadow Gave and. Borger taking a lot of damage in melee. He really should have been pulled back. A little bit of poor management there. And also the Brace Shaman of Death not really doing a lot of work. I don't think I saw too much magic casting from him uh, apart from a Spirit Leech or two that goes down on Grimgore Ironhide. Over here, the Orc Arrow Boys, the last remaining unit of Orc Arrow Boys, or two remaining units of Orc Arrow Boys, trying to quickly take down these Minotaurs with shields. And that's a good call. Uh, it does all feel like it's over already, but trying to take down this extremely dangerous unit right now uh, is a great call because, of course, these guys, they have their backs turned to this unit of Orc Arrow Boys, so they will eat a lot of damage from these guys. And these Orc Arrow Boys, the best target they have in their vicinity is probably this uh, unit of Minotaurs with shields. They could try and hit this unit of Chaos Warhounds with poison, but uh, really taking care of that one Warhound unit right now isn't going to do as much as potentially taking out this Minotaur unit. Uh, but on the topic of Warhounds, you'll see these Warhounds come diving into the Orc Arrow Boys, shutting these guys down permanently, and they were doing the bulk of the damage on this unit of Minotaurs with shields, so great call there, great move there. And over here, these Chaos Warhounds hunting down these Orc Biggins as they retreat, and you'll see over here we do have, finally, the use of uh, some magic. The Fate of Buna does go down, so between Spirit Leech on Grimgore Ironhide and Fate of Buna, just to bring an end to a bunch of these green skin units, uh, the Bray Shaman of Death wasn't used too much, and you'll see everyone has started to rout. Morgur does die, which is surprising, but a Pyrrhic victory for the Beastmen at the end of the day. And again, this really isn't your typical Beastmen build, so it was nice to see it come out on top. Great work taking care of the small but threatening enemy cavalry force at the start, and then letting the Senegors and the Warhounds do as they please to the Greenskin rear. I was surprised to see Morgur drop so easily, but that's, you know, he's evidently not ideal to keep him in melee, uh, and Grimgor did some quick work on him, but he did manage to get some Chaos Spawn out there. Ultimately, uh, the Beastmen won with a surprising build, coming in with a lot of Minotaurs, a lot of fear, and uh, really some good cavalry play right at the beginning. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more Total War content and keep sending in your battle replays. I've said it countless times, I think it's one of the best ways to learn, and I love just highlighting great battles from the community. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.